everyone and welcome to Moonbell Soaps. My name is Belle and today I am going to be making a mosaic soap. Here I am pouring my lye water solution with sodium lactate into my oils and then I'm going to be blending to an emulsion slash thin trace. Um, and what that means is just how thick or thin the batter is. The more you mix, the thicker the batter gets. Um, the six oils and butters I am using to make this soap is olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, castor oil and sweet almond oil. A lot of soapers like to use palm oil but I am personally um, against using palm oil in my soap and have decided not to use it after doing a bit of research and found that the oils I'm using are suitable for what I would like out of a bar of soap. Um, here I'm still blending. I love it when it blend the lye water solution blends into the oils and it becomes like a creamy, creamy goodness. This is what the soap batter is after you've mixed the two together. Blending can take, uh, depending on your recipe, take a while or it could be really quick. Depends on the temperatures of your oils and lye solution as well. Ideally, they should be in the same kind of temperature range as each other. Um, here I am pouring off a bit of batter to, um, or a bit, of, a lot of batter. As my main batter, it will be coloured white. Um, this here is canary yellow mica from Bath Bomb World, mixed in some of my oils. And the next jug I am getting is Blueberry Delight Mica mixed in some of my oils from my Mica Obsession. I'm pouring some soap batter into that. The next jug is Shimmer Green Mica from Green Living Australia. Has a little bit of a sparkle into the green. Really like it. And this jug is Desire Mica from my Mica Obsession. And most of my colorants and mica powders come from my micro obsession, but occasionally I'll get other colorants that I like the look of from other places. Um, Green Living Australia is just down the road from me, which is really convenient. Got to scrape out the bowl, make sure you don't leave any batter behind, don't want to waste any. That's why a spatula is a soaper's best friend. Whoever invented spatulas is a genius. Okay, so what I'm going to do is probably set aside the colours that I don't need to use yet. And I'll bring, oh, well, first I'm going to top up my colours. Obviously, I didn't think I'd eyeballed it accurately enough. And I would like more colour, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to set aside my colours because I don't need to work with them just yet. I won't mix them in yet either. I'll just bring a, um, my main batter to the front. And what I'm going to do first is add my fragrance, which I'll show you in a second. Yep, so that's my bowl of fragrance ready, set out to pour into each of my batters. It is Jalapeno Quilada from um, Aussie Candle Supplies. I really love Aussie Candle Supplies, they're a great company, and I picked um, Jalapeno Colada because it was a new fragrance by them and it sound perfect for a mosaic soap. Here I'm just putting in the titanium dioxide into the soap batter. I usually leave it to last because it can thicken the soap batter quite a bit. And in goes the fragrance and now I'm probably going to mix it all up. Mixy, mixy. It's 
kind of therapeutic soap making. It's kind of a mixture between um it's kind of a mixture between being a mad scientist and experimenting and seeing what kind of creations you get. Feels like you're making potions almost. As a kid as a kid, did you ever mix things together and and try to see what you would get? That's how soap making feels, although you have more of an idea of what you're gonna get. But sometimes soap has a um mind of its own and it will just do whatever it wants. But with titanium dioxide, it's good to stick blend it in because it doesn't always disperse evenly. Got to use my spatula and get as much soap out as possible. Here you can see I've covered my um, stove top with biodegradable plastic bags so just so I don't ruin my stove top because um, I rent and I don't want to do that. Here is my soap mold. It is a tall and skinny mold from Brambleberry. And Brambleberry is a big um, soaping supply company in America. And Aussie Soap Supplies actually stock some of Brambleberry's items. I really like this tall and skinny mold. Really good sized bars. And fit in your hand. I'm first just pouring off some of the white soap batter into the base of the um, soap mould and banging it down to get some air bubbles out. Just got to clean up my mess. I'm the messiest person I know when soaping. I don't know how other soapers, I've watched them on YouTube, I don't know how they keep everything so clean unless they're really good at editing, which I'm not. So you will see all my mess. You will see lots of mess and you'll see my errors and failures and you'll just see everything when I'm soaping because I am not that good at editing. So I'm pouring some fragrance into the Canary Yellow batter and mixing that all up and I kind of want the colors to be a little bit thicker so I, they stand apart the thinner the batter is the more the colors will swirl together and they can get muddied and, and change the color of each other um, but in this instance for the mosaic soap I kind of want the colors to say stay separate um, the idea for this mosaic soap actually came from my husband's mother who's just recently gotten into um, mosaics and she did a stool that I saw and I quite liked and I thought hmm I could make a soap out of that <laughs> so that's where the inspiration came from don't know how, you know you never know how it's gonna turn out yet though until it's made just rambling. Here's the shimmer green mica um, coloured butter from my micro obsession. Pouring in some fragrance. Now with greens, so with some colourants, um, they will actually morph when they react with the soap batter. So this will probably turn a yucky kind of green and then morph back once it's cured or once it's saponified. That also can sometimes happen with yellows. They'll turn orange, but then they'll turn back to the nice yellow colour. So if you ever see that happen, don't panic. They may just turn back yet to their normal colour. It's just a reaction. As I said, this is like being a mad scientist. You're experimenting. I've been making soap for two years now. And I just recently decided to start doing videos. Um, more so so I can see what I'm doing and have a record of the different kind of soaps I make. Um, I really enjoy it and hopefully one day we'll be selling soap. And oh, my dream would be to live off of selling soap. Just be making soap all day, every day. 
absolutely love it find it therapeutic find it hits that creative spot that I seem to lack (laughs) adding in the last of the fragrance not much went into the red but that's okay you'll still be able to smell it quite strongly in the soap I'm not sure if I've gone over the notes for the fragrance but it is a tropical combination of gorgeous fruity pineapple with the unexpected spiciness of jalapenos and creamy coconut. A delicious fragrance. Um, It has top notes of jalapeno pepper, rum notes, pineapple juice and citron. Middle notes of coconut cream, coriander, which I can't smell any coriander in it so don't panic. Uh, Dry notes of vanilla bean and iced musk. For some reason I feel like I can smell some mango in this, but the notes don't state any mango at all. Maybe it's the pineapple I'm smelling, but it smells a little bit mango-y to me. It's really nice, and I thought this would be a great fragrance for a mosaic soap. And it has 0% vanillin, so I don't have to worry about it discolouring to a yucky brown. Which a lot of um, vanillin and fragrances will discolour your soap to a brown. It's just what vanillin does. So if you want a vanilla soap, I'm sorry, but you won't have it very white. It's going to be a brown. Here I'm bringing back my main soap battle. And I'm going to start plopping in my colours. I've decided to start with the green, which you can see has turned a little bit of a yucky green. But don't worry, it will turn back to its nice shimmer green. So the idea was to have white soap on the bottom and then all the different colours kind of popped in on top of each other in the middle and then white on top. And then I was going to put my... um, mosaic pieces my mosaic tiles on top of the soap it's always fun to see how a soap turns out and here I'm putting in my color doesn't look too appealing so far but that's okay Just spooning it out and spreading it around a bit, trying not to break through the first layer of soap that's already there. And I was going to go for the yellow, but I've changed my mind and gone for the red. Looks like Christmas, Christmas colours. Plop, plop. to do now is place these little melt and pour tiles that I made earlier onto the soap to kind of look like mosaic tiles. Um, I was going to place them randomly but decided straight lines looked better. Um, I'm now using a wooden skewer which I'm gently pushing on the tiles with to make sure they are firmly in the cold process soap and that they won't fall off after um, curing.
done this mosaic soap. Um, I forgot to record the cutting of this soap, so what I'll do is just pop a uh, photo of the finished soap up at the end so you can see. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the little bell down below for any notifications of new videos that I do. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Bye!